What's up, everybody? We're back for the 11th movie in the series, Godzilla vs. Hedera, or Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster. In the English dub, they pronounce it Hedra, but I've always said Hedera, so that's what we're going with. Let's go. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I'm Jared Fearing. I'm a lifelong Godzilla fan and a big fan of Halloween. And nothing says Halloween like monster movies. So this year for the month of October, we're gonna review every single Godzilla movie from Gojira all the way to Godzilla and Kong The New Empire. So join me this month for a new video every single day and see if I go insane in the process. Let's get to it. Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster has some of the strongest messages in the film that we've seen since the original Gojira. The original Gojira is much more about nuclear war and the horrors of warfare, etc. Whereas Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster is heavily environmental and came at a time when the world was facing a real pollution crisis. And we still are. It's not the forefront of the headlines like it was then, especially with ocean dumpage. But if you want to have your hearts broken, feel free to Google some of the things that are happening with the ocean right now. Ocean dumpage was actually such a problem that it was mounting between the 50s, 60s, 70s, and peaked out in the 80s. And when this movie came out in 1972, is actually the same year that they signed the Marine Protection Research and Sanctuaries Act. Things didn't clear up completely though, as I said, it's still a big issue today. We have never really gotten over the pollution crisis and it's continued to get worse in different ways. But let's not focus on the environmental message because you're gonna get enough of that if you choose to watch the movie. You don't need to be educated by my stupid face. The movie opens with a child playing with Godzilla toys and a man walks up to him, uh, his buddy or family friend, and says, oh, you like Godzilla, eh? And the English dub has a kid say, yeah, but Superman beats him easily. I'm very curious whether that was in the Japanese version or not. Oh, you like Godzilla, right? Superman beats them all. So after checking, it definitely isn't. What a bizarre move to devalue the main character of the movie that we're watching. The English version of Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster opens with their theme song, Save the Earth, which is like a 60s ballad to environmentalism. When you hear it the first time, you're like, okay, that's not a very good song, but whatever, I can see what they're going with. The unfortunate thing is that it's repeated so many times throughout this movie. It's replayed three or four times, including kind of like a disco version at one point. And by the end, you're just like, Jesus Christ, stop with the Save the Earth song. It's terrible. And that's the English dub. I actually don't remember if the Japanese version has its equivalent of that theme song, but the English version sure does, and it sucks. Here, listen just a little bit. I can't play you much or I'll get YouTube struck, but just listen to this. Yeah, imagine that multiple times in a one and a half hour setting. It's enough to drive you crazy. This movie is much more adult. After we saw All Monsters Attack, which was basically an after-school special for kids, they went the exact opposite way with this. Completely new creative team from writing to directing to effects, but also this movie features some of the most gory Godzilla deaths in any of the movies across any of the franchises. People become uh, covered in acid thanks to Hedera or Hedera, and they mutate and melt down into bones, and it's pretty damn gruesome to be honest. Hedra's like a really kind of scary character, honestly. It's a creature that is a living mineral, and they first find it like a gigantic tadpole. And when I first saw this movie, I was like, oh, giant tadpole, that's ridiculous, that can't happen, ha ha ha. Look at this. Now, I don't know if that has anything to do with environmentalism, but the fact that we found giant tadpoles like the one in the movie is a little bit ominous, maybe. Hedera is also one of the only monsters we see that changes shape and goes into different forms uh, throughout the movie several times. Later on, we see creatures like Destroya that has several forms, or Space Godzilla that has two forms, or even Mothra has two forms. 
And this creature has several forms. So there's a flying, there's like an ultimate combined version, there's a little version, there's a tadpole version. So in that sense, it's quite different in that they have several different ways for Hedra to attack and exist. It's, it's something that I really feel gets capitalized on the most in the Destroya film, which is the last of the Heisei era. And we'll get there. We'll get there to talk about Destroya. But for this time, it was pretty novel to see a creature go through all these different changes. When Hedera combines and the multiple pieces form one entity, that's when we get the iconic creeping ooze blob thing with big red eyes. And it was said by director Yoshimitsu Bano that the eyes were intentionally supposed to look like vaginas. So if you're watching it and thinking that, you're on the right track. Don't don't write yourself off as a loser pervert. Unless you are one, then it's good to know what you are. This movie is such an odd duck because the main character is still kind of a child. But even though that's the case, there's some brutal deaths. There's some really scary imagery. There's a lot of cryptic, odd nightmare fuel shots where like a mannequin is just decaying in a puddle of sludge. Um, and lots of things like that, like horrific pollution scenes of ocean dumpage, smog, and it's mixed with like really kind of creepy cartoon scenes. I'm not exactly sure how this movie came together, but I have to think Acid played a huge part in it. And if you think I'm just being judgmental, there's literally a club scene that is definitely meant to be like an acid trip. Not that I would know what that is. There's a bunch of people in the club and all of a sudden they start morphing into fishes. The most interesting thing that I see from this is that it reminds me of a very iconic scene from Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, which became a fan favorite film many, many years later and has nothing to do with Godzilla, but everything to do with drugs. In addition to the whole Save the Earth fiasco, Godzilla himself has a new musical theme when he appears, and uh, it's not bad the first time, but again, it, it's much like the Save the Earth thing. Every time Godzilla appears, they play this goddamn melody, and by the end of the movie, you just want to blow your brains out. So those two uh, musical pieces are, are horribly used here because they're overused again and again and again. Part of that is because the whole movie was produced between the human scenes and the special effects scenes in just 35 days. New director Yoshimitsu Bano was kind of kind of put over a barrel. This movie had a much smaller budget than previous Godzilla movies have had and a much shorter time to film it. So all things considered, because it's so weird and different, I'm not that surprised that it came together quickly because there's a lot of ideas that, you know, in the pre-production stage, you might be like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if Godzilla could fly using his breath as a jet propulsion thing? And then somebody wiser would be like, that's very silly, let's cut that out. But guess what? That's actually one of the scenes. That's one of the most iconic things from this movie. Godzilla takes off like a goddamn jet. But you know, now that it's out there, it is quite iconic. Uh, so it stood the test of time for the silliness of the Showa era. And so for something like that, you know what? I, I guess it works and I, I like looking back on it now. In the club sequence that is meant to be like an acid trip, they also get kind of uh, invaded, so to speak, by a chunk of Hedra that comes smashing through the doorway and oozes down the stairs and everyone runs and is afraid of it. And it's very reminiscent of the blob, whether that was intentional or not. The blob very much has a scene like that where ooze, or blob, is coming into the theater and everyone's running to get away from it. They kind of do the same thing here, but the difference is that nobody is turned to acid yet, and when the hetera sludge kind of comes down the stairs fully, there's a poor little kitty left covered in gunk that survived but is meowing sadly. Makes me sad to see that they did that to this poor cat in this scene, but it does kind of it does kind of tell the story that pollution is horrible to the things that uh, we don't have that much control over, like animals and nature. Pollution can kill those things and make them sick and cause mutations. So I get it, but I'm also not a fan of the actual animal 
actor being covered in ooze. I'm sure it was fine though, probably. The battle scenes are incredibly odd. Like there's a scene where Godzilla grabs Hedera by the tail and swings him around multiple, multiple times. And that's actually where the ooze gets shot off Hedera and lands in these different locations. But it's just, it's kind of odd. We've never seen that before. And it's almost like pro wrestling inspired. Um, it's just, it's a very odd take on pretty much everything. From top to bottom, it's all so strange and surreal. It's, it's hard to say who this movie is for. Um, it's almost for an audience that is either a diehard Godzilla fan that want to see it because they want to see them all, or it's because you're an audience that wants to see it because it's so weird and you know that going in. I would never try to sit down just a general audience and make them watch it. I bet they would walk out. The final battle between Hedra and Godzilla is really interesting because it's one of the first times we see Godzilla taking on serious damage, actually. Hedra sprays him with acid and his eye is severely burnt and we actually see the flesh being discolored. It's interesting and kind of marks a shift in the series because as we see next in Godzilla vs. Gigan and Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, they started showing Godzilla taking on some pretty serious damage and the future movies actually show monsters bleeding, which is something that we've not really seen till this point either. So it's arguable that Hedra set the tone that we can see the monsters be damaged too and it does add something to it in a sense of realism. The humans set up an electric barricade in order to trap Hedra and dry him out and make him more susceptible to damage, and it works. And then Godzilla pulls out two orbs from Hedra, and it's very confusing what the hell's going on. Well, those orbs were actually supposed to be Hedra's eyes, and uh, maybe a power source, I guess, but they didn't come out looking like eyes, so you're just kind of confused why he's holding these two white orbs. Again, you have to chalk this up to the fact that this movie was filmed in 35 days. So all these crazy ideas that they've had, everything that's been conceptualized did not make it into the movie. And that's one of the things. There's a lot of really weird camera shots in this too. Uh, weird underneath point of view shots of the monsters, fish island shots. There's a moment where Godzilla briefly tries to make the Ultraman symbol and gets scalded by Hedera. It's just so strange, and I wish that I could have been in the room while they were developing this because I guarantee the drugs were fantastic. And finally, at the end of the movie, when Godzilla has arrived victorious, they cram in that goddamn theme song one more time. <sighs> The English dub of Godzilla vs. Hedera or Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster has been incredibly hard to find for many years. It was released on a very weird DVD set, which I actually have here, and this is not the Godzilla we see in the movies. This is Godzilla from the Millennium series. This was a two pack that has Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster, which is Godzilla vs. Hedera, and Godzilla vs. Megalon. Um, what a weird pack. And it only has the English dubs, but later on, those movies became very hard to find with their English dubs. And like I've mentioned in previous videos, I have the Criterion collection that features all the Showa movies, but they're all in Japanese. So the English translations got lost. And the English movie is quite different, I believe. It's been a while since I've seen the Japanese version, but there's a lot of changes to score and a little bit of story change as well. So having the English version on DVD is something of a treasure these days. And I don't know how easy it is to get, but I think I bought this for maybe $2.99. This was like a bargain bin thing that they printed just to make an easy buck off of Godzilla when uh, I think this came out, uh, when is this? I can't actually find a release date on this, but it's got the Millennium Godzilla. So I'm guessing this was released probably around 2006, somewhere in there maybe. Probably a little bit before the 2014 Godzilla got announced and they were still trying to make a buck off of the character before there were any modern films of it. So when it comes down to it, what do I think of this? Do I recommend it? Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna recommend it. Uh, I'm not gonna highly recommend it, but it's just so weird and different. And there are some truly like disturbing images, like the people being melted and the different pollution things and the cartoon sequences. It's just so weird. 
if you can get through a weird movie and you want to see just kind of like what the most bizarre take on Godzilla is, this is probably it. So if you're a real fan and you want to kind of see the history that the series has taken on, I do recommend you watch it. But if you can't handle like bad dubs, bad lighting, the movie is covered in film grain and it's underexposed, so it's very dark depending on which version you get to see. You know, I think this movie is for a certain audience, but if you feel like you're that audience, then I am gonna recommend it because it is a part of Godzilla history and it's so different. Hey everybody, thanks for sticking with me. We only have four more movies in the Showa era before we move on to Godzilla's rebirth in the 80s. So keep coming back. Let me know in the comments whether you've seen Godzilla vs. Hedera, Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster, the English version, the Japanese version. Let me know your thoughts. This movie's so weird, I actually want to hear what people think of it. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I will see you right back here tomorrow for Godzilla on Monster Island or Godzilla vs. Gigan. And that's actually one of my favorite Godzilla movies of all time. I can't wait to talk about it. See you tomorrow.